Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. I fix a lot of furnaces at my job, and some of the most annoying problems that I have involve pressure switches. I mean, there's usually only a few things that cause a pressure switch to trip, and you check those things, and if it's not that, then things can get kind of hairy from there. So I thought I would make a video of 10 things that can cause your furnace to give you a pressure switch error. And most furnaces will have a sight glass on the bottom door here that will blink an error code if something's wrong with your furnace. The control board in there has LED lights, and that LED light will typically be blinking some kind of a pressure switch error. On different furnaces, it's called different things. It might be called, you know, pressure switch not closing, or pressure switch failed to open, or something to do with the pressure switch. And typically, on the back of your door will be the explanation of the codes. Typically, the way the LEDs work is they'll blink a couple of times, pause, blink a couple of times, pause, and you have to count those blinks and the diagnostic chart on the back of your door, or if you have your owner's manual or install manual from your furnace, you can find the diagnostic chart on there. Sometimes it might be on the control board itself. In my case, the diagnostic chart is right on my board. If you're having a pressure switch problem, your control board will most likely be blinking a pressure switch error of some sort. All right, let's begin. So this list is in no particular order, but the first one in the list is restricted venting. So here's your exhaust pipe. If you have an 80% furnace, You'll have a steel pipe for your exhaust and sometimes something is going on usually in the chimney cap that's on top of your roof maybe there's some ice that built up over there or a bird decided to make a home there or something is causing it to restrict if you have a very old furnace then perhaps it's just rusting away and starting to collapse inside the chimney also if you have a water heater exhaust pipe that hooks up to your furnace exhaust pipe like in my setup here if you follow the pipe here, it goes right to the water heater. I have a natural draft water heater. Another thing you could look for, if your water heater has plastic rings on it, like mine does right here, you can look and see if those rings are melted. You can see right here that mine is just slightly melted. That means at one point my water heater was back drafting a little bit, so the exhaust fumes, instead of going out the chimney, for some reason came out here. And this doesn't worry me too much. Usually if there's a problem with the exhaust, these rings will be completely melted. So if you see your rings all messed up, that means something is plugging up your exhaust pipe up the line. So that's what to look for on an 80% furnace. If you have a 90% furnace or a high efficiency furnace, you'll have plastic pipes, you'll have one exhaust and usually one intake pipe, either white or black. And those two can get restricted and a lot of times birds are a problem with that. If you follow those pipes outside, they have an exit point outside somewhere. Sometimes birds will make a nest inside that pipe and block things up. Also, ice buildup is something you should look for. If you have a burner box with the burner door on top of it, you can try opening that up and seeing if your furnace runs with the door off. If your furnace runs with the door off, that means your intake pipe is plugged. So for example, if your control board is blinking a pressure switch air, you can turn the power off to your furnace, take that door off from the burner box, Turn the power back on and see if your furnace will light and work. If it works with the door off, then you know for sure that somewhere in your intake pipe there's some kind of a blockage. And you need to clear that stuff out or hire somebody to do it for you. And of course, if you put that door back on while the furnace is running and everything just extinguishes, that means for sure that pipe is blocked. And the exhaust pipe, which is usually hooked up to your inducer motor, doesn't get stuff inside of it as often, but I have seen birds also go down into that pipe and if they can't get out the other end, they usually end up in the inducer motor. And a lot of times where you, when your inducer motor starts, you'll hear some kind of a rattle or something banging in there. In that case, you could just take the inducer motor off and just see if there's anything inside there that you need to clear out. And once you get all that stuff out, it should fire right back up. And number two on the list is a plugged secondary heat exchanger. So this, of course, will only concern the high efficiency furnaces with the plastic exhaust pipe and intake. Those high efficiency furnaces, they have a primary heat exchanger and a secondary heat exchanger. So the hot combustion gases, they go through the primary first and then the secondary. And by the time that heat reaches the secondary heat exchanger, it cools off to a point where condensation starts to form. And if there's any kind of air leaks or gaps, or for some reason the water is not draining properly, that condensation eventually will start to rust away and corrode your secondary heat exchanger. And the debris, will plug up the secondary heat exchanger ports. So on a primary heat exchanger, the ports where the flames go into, you know, they're pretty big. The exit holes and the holes where the flames blow into. And the secondary, instead of being this big, they're probably like a quarter of the size. 
or they're just narrow slots and it doesn't take much to plug them up. And on some carrier models, I know they had a lot of problems with their secondary heat exchanger where on the inside of the heat exchanger, they had some kind of a coating that eventually would flake off, break off and also plug up those ports. If you're having that problem, unfortunately, that's kind of a bad problem to have. A lot of people end up replacing the furnace at that point. And the best way to check for a plugged secondary heat exchanger is to use a combustion analyzer. So of course that's expensive equipment. You would have to call somebody who has that. I doubt you want to spend like 600 bucks on a combustion analyzer to check it yourself. But you would check the exhaust fumes inside of your exhaust pipe. And typically your carbon monoxide emissions are going to be really high. And number three on the list is a plug pressure switch port. This mostly happens on 80% furnaces, not as much on the high efficiency ones, although it can happen on there too. But basically what I'm talking about is the port where your pressure switch hose hooks up to, usually on the metal collector box, or sometimes it'll go to the inducer motor housing directly. So if you pull your hose off, kind of hard to see behind everything here, but you got a metal port like this, a lot of times it'll be shorter. Sometimes this port gets plugged up. So in that case, you can just take a stiff wire or some kind of pin or something and just kind of slide it in there in and out and just get that port cleaned up. And once in a while, you'll find that port just completely plugged. So after you clear that out, you can put your pressure switch hose back on. And if that was your problem, your furnace should come right back on. And number four is broken or cracked pressure switch hoses. So that's the same pressure switch hose that I pulled off. Usually right at the port or at the pressure switch where the hose hooks on, it'll get brittle with time. And you know, if you just start touching it, you can feel that it's kind of burnt out hard rubber instead of the nice flexible stuff. And chances are it'll start just breaking off as you're touching it. If you have cracked pressure switch tubing, that might just be enough to cause the pressure switch not to close when the inducer motor turns on. And then of course, nothing else works from there. And usually fixing that is very easy. All you gotta do, typically those pressure switch hoses or the tubing is long enough where you could just cut off the brittle piece and just hook that hose right back up into the port and your problem should be solved. And number five is a plugged condensate trap. This will only apply to the high efficiency furnaces, the one with the plastic exhaust pipe and intake. Usually the condensate trap will be on the midsection of the furnace, either on the outside of the cabinet, on left or right, or it'll be inside. And this happens the most on carrier furnaces. They have a white trap that's right here in between the top section and the bottom section. Those white condensate traps get plugged a lot. As for plugged condensate traps, I see the most plugged traps on carriers and Bryant's. So if you have one of those, then the first thing you should do is take that condensate trap out and get it cleaned up. And doing that is pretty simple. You would just take the clamps off of all three hoses that go into the condensate trap, take all three hoses off, take the bottom hose off. There's two clips on top of the condensate trap. You press them both in and you can swivel that trap right out. Once you have it out, you can just flush it with hot water in all the ports. Make sure the hot water gets in everywhere and just close all of the ports with your fingers and just rattle it real good. Shake it up, dump it out, pour water in there, shake it out, dump it out. Keep doing that until you can pour water into every single hole and have the water come out the other end. And just a fair warning, just so you know, if that is indeed your problem, that means water is backing up in your collector box and that's what's causing your pressure switch to trip. That means your collector box, which is behind your inducer motor, has a lot of water in there. So when you pull the big ribbed hose off of that condensate trap, there's gonna be a ton of water that comes flushing out, probably like half a gallon. So usually when I take that hose off, I always have like a little pail or a jar ready, and I just hold it right here. And right when I take that hose off, I just stick that hose right into that pail. So if there is a ton of water, it could just all drain into there instead of making a little flood. And number six is a bad pressure switch itself. I have two of them. That's because I have a two stage furnace. And this is one of the most common mistakes. People tend to replace a pressure switch right when they see a pressure switch error code on their control board. And just so you know, the pressure switch itself very rarely goes bad. I seldom see a bad pressure switch. Usually if the pressure switch is trip, they're just doing their job and you either have something plugged in your exhaust, in your intake, or your condensate line or trap is plugged. But an easy way to check a pressure switch is to just pull the hose off going to the pressure switch. And what I mean by that is you leave the hose on the pressure switch itself and pull off the other end. So for example, you'd pull it off 
and then blow through the pressure switch hose or suck on it depending if you have negative or positive pressure. If you're not sure, just try doing both and you should hear a little click coming from the pressure switch. And that is the sound of the little micro switch opening and closing inside of the pressure switch. But when you do that test, do it very gently because the diaphragm inside of the pressure switch is very sensitive. It does not take a lot of pressure. So if you blow a little too hard inside of the pressure switch tubing, you can rupture that diaphragm inside of the pressure switch. And if your pressure switch was good to begin with, then at that point it would be bad. And number seven is a bad upward pitch on an exhaust pipe. Now this will only concern the high efficiency furnaces that create condensation in their exhaust pipe. And what I mean by the upward pitch is this. So for every foot of exhaust pipe, it should be pitched upwards a quarter of an inch. So one fourth of an inch. So for every foot, it has to go upwards one fourth of an inch. And the reason for that is there's condensation that forms in the inside of that pipe. It needs to be pitched upwards because that water needs to run back down into the furnace, go into your condensate trap, and then drain out into your floor drain. And when I've seen this happen in the past, usually this happens when you have a really long exhaust pipe. So for example, you know, if your furnace is on one side of the basement, but the exhaust pipe exits out on the other side of the house, when you have such a long run, then it's kind of hard to have an upward pitch going all the way out. And if your pipe has any kind of sag in it, then the water will start to accumulate inside that pipe. And a lot of times that standing water will be enough to impede the draft to the point where the pressure switch senses that there's not enough exhaust going out the pipe and the pressure switch will trip and everything will turn off. And if you suspect that that's your problem, a lot of times I come up to the exhaust pipe and if you just push it upwards, so the pipe kind of goes back towards the furnace, you'll hear a bunch of water rushing back down into your furnace. If you hear that, that means you for sure have a little slouch or a sag inside of your exhaust pipe and that should be readjusted so it's an upward pitch all the way out. And number eight is a bad inducer motor. Of course, if your inducer motor is burnt out, then it's not turning on, it's not making a draft, so your pressure switch will not close. And there's a few things that can go wrong with an inducer motor. If the inducer motor itself is burnt out, then you just have to replace it. A lot of times it'll get really hot. If your furnace was sitting there and trying to start for a long time, if you put your hand on the inducer motor, chances are it'll be super hot. You won't be able to keep your hand on it. If it's that hot, then you know for sure your inducer motor is burnt out. But you should also know that some inducer motors have a little capacitor on them. They don't look like normal capacitors, you know, the silver cylinder. They're just usually tiny little black things that are mounted on the inducer motor housing somewhere. But sometimes what happens is just that little capacitor is dead, but the actual inducer motor is still good. That's pretty rare, but if you get lucky, then maybe just your little capacitor is dead and the actual inducer motor is still good to go. And another thing that's happened to me a few times before is that the inducer motor blower wheel, that's the actual squirrel cage wheel that's inside of the inducer motor housing. Sometimes the fins on that blower wheel will get coated with dirt and other kind of debris. And the more buildup that accumulates on those fins, the less volume of air that blower wheel will be able to push out through your exhaust pipe. So I have had times where I took out the whole inducer motor assembly, cleaned out the fins on that blower wheel, put it back in, and the furnace came right back on and ran like a champ. And number nine is a loose or broken electrical connection going to the pressure switch or maybe at the control board. So you should definitely check your wires and especially the connectors going to your pressure switches. Sometimes I will take a wire or the connector going to the pressure switch and just wiggle it a little bit and the thing will just fall off. So definitely keep that in mind. With time, those connectors do get brittle and eventually they will make a very loose connection. And if there's not enough of a connection in there, then of course that pressure switch won't close or perhaps it'll be an intermittent issue where the pressure switch will sometimes close, sometimes not. So just wiggle all the wire connectors, check all the wires going to your pressure switches and the plugs that go into the control board and make sure there's nothing broken off there. And number 10 is a bad control board. So usually what that one would look like is maybe your control board is not sending power to the inducer motor, therefore the pressure switch is not closing, or it's not sending voltage to the actual pressure switch. And that's why nothing works. So if I suspect that the control board is bad, the first thing I do is bypass the thermostat and make sure that it's not actually the thermostat that's bad. So I bypass the thermostat by putting a jumper between R and W, and then I check to see if my inducer motor is getting 120 volts. If there is a call for heating, but the inducer motor is not getting 120 volts, that means the board is bad. Or if there's a call for heating, 
and the pressure switch is not getting voltage, then that could also mean that the control board is bad. But keep in mind that there might be something in series with the pressure switch that could be causing the problem instead. So perhaps the high limit tripped, or maybe a flame rollout tripped. So make sure you check your wiring diagram or just trace the wires and see that there's not something in series with the pressure switch. And maybe that thing is tripped and that's what's interrupting the power to the pressure switch. Well guys, and that's all I had for you today. Hopefully you found this video useful and it will help you troubleshoot and diagnose your pressure switch problem. And if you have any other pressure switch fixes that I did not mention in this list, please let us know in the comments below to help out everybody else. Or if you were able to successfully fix your pressure switch problem, it would be awesome if you could come back and share your story in the comments below as well to help everybody else reading through that comment section. I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And for those of you that watched this video all the way till the end, let me share a quick story with you. So I fixed the guy's dryer recently probably like two or three weeks ago. And when I was done and about to leave, the guy asks me, hey, would you like a quarter pounder? And I tell him, you know, I really appreciate the thought, but I'm not very hungry, so I think I'll have to pass on that. But the guy was very nice and he kept insisting and he was saying, you know, if you're not gonna eat it now, well, you can at least take it to go. So finally I agreed and said, all right, fine, I'll take it. So the guy leaves and comes back with a quarter pounder. And I tell you, it sure wasn't something I was expecting. Here, I'll show you. Here's the quarter pounder he gave me. So it's a hammer that pounds, and of course the thing it's pounding is the quarter.